Thank you to Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez and Dr. Boo Nigren for speaking with us. The Mexico in Focus candidate conversations continue next week when correspondent Gwyneth Dolan sits down with each of the two major candidates for Congressional District 3, Teresa Ledger Fernandez and Alexis Martinez Johnson. For now, let's bring in our line opinion panelists for the week to talk about another big race for New Mexico Attorney General. Our panelists this week are former state, state of New Mexico State Senator Dee Dee Feldman, Merritt Allen of Fox Optima Public Relations, and UNM Law Professor Serge Martinez. Now, a growing emphasis on crime and public safety has pushed this race up the priority list for a lot of New Mexicans. One big issue that's factoring in is the state's pretrial detention process. Democrat Raul Torres has supported legislation that would create a rebuttal presumption, quote unquote. We'll talk about what that means in a second against release. That essentially means the defendant would have to prove they aren't a danger in order to be released before trial. And Merritt, that's been a big sticking point here for a long time. And now Republican challenger Jeremy Gay says that ignores the basic American principle of innocent until proven guilty. He puts the blame on DAs for failing to file the proper paperwork in some cases. Merritt, do you find it interesting that the Democrat is pushing the hard-nosed law and order approach here? Or is that the only room he's got to run in at this point? Well, and as um, a Republican married to a Democrat criminal defense attorney, rebuttable presumption is a hotbed issue mm -hmm. in my household. Uh, and what rebuttable presumption uh, does is in certain cases of um, a violent offender or a repeat offender, it um, gives uh, the judge discretion to put the burden of proof on the defense mm -hmm. to make the case why um, an individual shouldn't be subject to pretrial uh, confinement. Um, and that's a challenge in New Mexico because our public defenders um, offices are understaffed and under-resourced yep. and uh, putting more work on them as a challenge. And I, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I support, um, I support the rebuttable uh, presumption uh, uh, legislation myself, although I understand the challenges because I feel, in, particularly in Bernalillo County, um, the district attorney, attorney's office wasn't particularly uh, competent or uh, successful at, at just kind of basic administrative tasks. Mm -hmm. And so um, I do find it interesting that you have the Republican uh, taking uh, the side of uh, a defendant saying, oh, come on, prosecution, just do your job. Right. And it can be said from a criminal defense perspective, um, the prosecutors do have the deck stacked in their favor. And this is not, um, uh, uh, th this is just one more tool in their favor and more burden on the defense who already has so many burdens upon it, uh, trying to uh, make the case for their clients. Mm -hmm. So no, it's, it's incredibly interesting that you've got the Democrat being tough on crime and the Republican ad uh, advocating for defendants here. Yep. Um, but you know, uh, the uh, Democrat uh, primary looked like two Republicans running, uh, running for office. That's a good point. That last point there is kind of fascinating, <laughs> actually. Senator, I want to stay in this uh, rebuttable uh, presumption uh, with you for a quick second here. There was a recent study by researchers from the University of New Mexico and the Santa Fe Institute that found that rebuttable presumption would have a small effect on violent crime rates and would result in many people being jailed unnecessarily. It's an interesting other side of the spectrum there. Where does that make you fall in this, in this uh, argument? Well, it's it's a tough it's a tough decision. Mm -hmm. um, it all comes from an amendment to our constitution that was uh, passed several years ago that um, moved away from um, the rebuttable presumption and went to the clear and convincing standard. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is, um, those studies came out during the legislative session. And before, I think one of them was sponsored by the Legislative Finance Committee or mm -hmm. had something to do with the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, boy, Raul Torres went through the roof uh, and spent a lot of time trying to refute those studies uh, because his whole premise was, you know, we've got to stop the revolving door and this is the way to do it. Right. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, innocent until proven guilty is the bedrock of our legal system. Mm -hmm. And a rebuttable presumption seems to go against that and requires, um, you know, requires somebody to be locked up without 
uh, having proven their their guilt right. uh, and removes the possibility of bail. I mean, the whole the whole yeah. amendment was based on the idea that bail that many defendants could not afford bail. Uh, so it was unfair mm -hmm. uh, to lock them up. So it's, it's a tough one, but I agree with Merritt. This is very interesting that the Democrat that comes to, uh, <laughs> tough on crime and the Republican uh, who says that, you know, the, the DAs just have to file the paperwork properly. That's right. essentially what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's as simple as that, though. That's a good point there. I, I, I would posit it's not as simple as that. Uh, Professor, let me ask you this, uh, Professor Serge. Um, the politics all over this are, are, are easy to read, meaning a lot of folks are pointing at the district attorney's office as the last stop before people we don't want on the streets or back out in the streets and that everything's the revolving door there. If you take that away, politically, there's not much of a hammer left that hasn't been used before. And so you can see why people would want this, but it, it seems to me if, if it doesn't move the numbers appreciably, what have we gained here besides a, a, a pending Supreme Court challenge in, in some cases? Oh, you're on, you're on uh, mute there, Serge. So, <clears throat> yeah, it is, I mean, you, you nailed it, right? This is just political rhetoric um, and trying to show how tough on crime without any really without a whole lot of analysis of the underlying issue. Um, and, you know, that study from UNM and the Santa Fe Institute is not an outlier at all. All of the research has suggested the same thing. Mm -hmm. You'd get very little benefit in terms of preventing anyone from going out and being charged with more crimes uh, while on release. And you get a huge negative effect of locking people up uh, for who were never going to be, never going to, you know, do anything, not going to be charged with anything new. And, you know, it's really frustrating that the the conversation is so one sided and focused on this one note rather mm -hmm. than, you know, all of the people whose stories we never hear, who lost their job, who lost their housing, who had to spend time in jail, right, which is in itself a pretty awful thing. Um, and for what? Right. The, this is not an evidence based conversation. It's you know, it's just it's purely rhetorical. And right. the rhetoric it gets so heated that it's easy, as often is the case, to lose sight of the underlying, you know, the actual rights and values that we that we you know cling to in this country of innocent till proven guilty right. of freedom from, mm -hmm. you know, being punitive, uh, being punished before you're actually convicted of a crime. Right. And it's 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 extremely frustrating to watch this play out without any any reference to the underlying actual mm -hmm. data findings studies and the rebuttals you know i've heard the um accusations this is a flawed study because it doesn't feel right to me well that's you know the people who are saying that are smarter than that but they can get away with it interesting because points of there. the lack of depth in the discussion can i, can I add Where's... something to that too? Mm -hmm. and that is the whole question of whether this emphasis on uh, crime fighting is uh, really a red herring for an attorney general. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks feel that the attorney general's job is not crime fighting. That's the DA's job and the police's job. But the, the, um, the DA has much more of an administrative function representing the state when it comes to water law, mm -hmm. uh, also fighting corruption, and enforcing the Governmental Conduct Act, um, and uh, those are those are, are 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 not as politically sexy as the crime issue, but those are really the bread and butter of attorney generals rather than uh, fighting crime. I I appreciate that distinction. That's actually a very key point you make there, uh, Merritt. Interesting. I'm going to ask you a question there. With the context being, New Mexico has elected three Republican AGs in 110 years. But Mr. Gay, Jeremy Gay, recently released a poll from that conservative group Signal showing him statistically tied with Mr. Torres. No other polling shows him any closer than 10 points. Should Mr. Torres be in this fight, so to speak, in the last few weeks? I mean, should he be just cruising around this idea? I mean, he's in, in a fairly safe position here. Well, um, 
Uh, that's certainly um, uh, the history uh, favors uh, favors a Democrat, and it's true that uh, attorney general's races uh, are political races, not who's the best lawyer, but who's the best politician. Right. And we saw in the primary that Raul Torres is a politician. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we looked at his um, record as a district attorney, he's definitely a better politician than he is a prosecutor. So uh, 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 that being said, um, I think that gives him an edge in this race. I'm very intrigued by Jeremy Gay, mm -hmm. um, particularly uh, the breadth of his experience and the breadth of his law uh, practice in Gallup, because he is covering everything that is covered by the attorney general's office. He does water law. He does um, Native American law. Mm -hmm. He does family law. He does um, civil litigation. He's covering the full gamut of everything besides just criminal prosecution. Uh, to Didi's point, um, really the, the things that an, uh, an attorney general um, has to cover, not just uh, criminal law. So I really like Jeremy Gay as a candidate. I think it's very bold to come out uh, in your 30s and run uh, run for AG uh, the first time out. Is 33 too young for, an attorney, for this position? You know, I really, um, I think it depends on the momentum behind you. Um, there were mm -hmm. two big political machines behind each of the Democratic candidates, um, and that was going to be a big factor in the general election. Um, I don't see Republicans putting a lot of emphasis on this race. I've only seen one ad for uh, for Jeremy Gay. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think uh, he's just got a challenge getting a party and a political momentum uh, behind him as a newcomer. Uh, and, and that's uh, tough for him because um, it's not all about uh, law, it's about politics mm -hmm. and, and he's a newcomer. But I wanna, I wanna see more from, from him. Um, I'm pleased to see, you know, the signal poll uh, yeah, is uh, 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 hopeful. Uh, the other polls, um, you know, 10 points is uh, a lot to overcome, but it could be a lot more lopsided than that. So that's a point given, given the history of our state. So I, I think he's making a really good showing and I want to see more from Jeremy Gay. Good points there. Thank you all to our line opinion panel for this week. The panel and I also talk about the Legislative Council's recent vote, keeping harassment investigation procedures the same in the roundhouse. That's after concerns raised during the scandal surrounding Senator Daniel Ivey Soto. You can watch that conversation online right now on the New Mexico in Focus YouTube page. Now, next up, we're hearing from another voice working to protect the historic landscape around Chaco Canyon. Mario Atencio is the Greater Chaco Energy Organizer with Dine Care. In this case, Care stands for, quote, Citizens Against Ruining Our Environment, end quote. This week, Mr. Atencio talks with our land senior producer, Laura Pascas about how oil and gas drilling has affected lands where his family lives and the sagebrush stepped landscape near Counselor and Lybrook, New Mexico.